Hello, my dear students and colleagues in critical care medicine. In my previous video, we discussed two MCQs related to tension pneumothorax as a complication of invasive mechanical ventilation and a type of uh, patient ventilator asynchrony called ineffective triggering or mistriggering. Right. So in this video, I have come up with three interesting conceptual MCQs in mechanical ventilation series. And the discussion will be useful for those who are preparing for need super specialty in critical care medicine and trends. A 49 year old man is admitted from asthma exacerbation. His current mecha mechanical ventilation waveform are below. What mode is being used? SS control, pressure control ventilation, SIMV or PRVC that is pressure regulated volume control. So what? So now look at the pressure time scalar closely over here. The pressure in inspiration reaches to a certain limit and uh, after which it stays in constant, uh, you know, in, co in a constant uh, value and then suddenly it drops to zero. Okay. So this pattern is called the square wave pattern. And here the pressure is constant during the individual breath. And which is very, very peculiar to the pressure controlled breath. So only option B and option D are pressure controlled breath here. So probably B and D are the correct option. And AC, ACBC, AC is otherwise known as if AC is not uh, until proven, otherwise it is ACVC. Okay. And uh, SIMV can also be ruled out over here because SIMV can be again of two types, pressure SIMV and volume SIMV. But if it is not proven, otherwise it is just a volume SIMV. Okay. So we can think of two options, either pressure control, uh, ventilation or pressure regulated volume control. So either two of the answers. So we will see. So now look at the flow pattern over here. The flow also reaches to a maximum value. And then from there, it gradually starts uh, down. Gradual, uh, it gradually you know, uh, comes down and touches the baseline. So this uh, flow pattern is called the disregulating flow pattern. Okay, And after a certain time, I mean, after it's reaching to some value, it is cycling off. So from here, uh, ventilation, uh, you know, is changing to expiration. So inspiration to expiration. So this is the cycling threshold where the uh, cycling threshold, this is called cycling threshold at the float waveform. After this, the ventilator cycles off. Okay. So this is very peculiar again for the pressure limited breaths. But look at now one more thing that you would, you would be able to notice that the shape of waveform is changing from first breath to the third breath, isn't it? So it's increasing. More uh, pressure is generated, more flow is being generated, and more volume is being generated. And can you see the volume? Uh, there is a pattern. So in volume, this volume is reaching to a certain limit here, and then it is constant, and then it's decreasing, isn't it? Here also, same thing. It's constant for some time. So ideally, uh, in volume control, what happens? It should go like this. So there should be a proper peak. And in this mode, peculiar mode, the peaks are cut off. So these are peakless volume waveforms. The peakless volume scalars, volume time waveforms, scalars. This is the right one as scalars. This is very peculiar again of uh, pressure limited breaths. So why these peaks are cut off because of uh, a certain pressure is reached. Okay, so why this pressure is changing? Why this pressure is increasing? Because the ventilator is testing the breath. So this kind of variability is a feature of pressure regulated volume mode. Because in pressure control ventilation, the uh, there will not be, uh, the, bre the breath will be of constant uh, shape. Okay, but here the shape is changing. So it's uh, pressure regulated volume control. So we will understand more 
on pressure regulated volume control in the subsequent slides. So this mode ensures to meet the volume target. So this is the mode, this pressure regulated volume control where target is met. Okay, it is starts from the lowest pressure breath and ventilator sees how much volume is generated. If the volume generated is not meeting the set tidal volume on the ventilator, then it delivers next breath of higher pressure to meet the tidal volume. And in this way, it decides itself what is the lowest pressure needed to deliver that much volume of breath. So it takes some time to test this thing. Okay, so that is the peculiarity of this mode. Uh, so the, the ventilator sends few test breaths to assess the uh, assess the uh, mechanics of respiratory system and uh, it wants to give that much tidal volume but with the least pressure so that is the beauty of this this mode this mode is also called as the dual mode of mechanical ventilation or non conventional mode of ventilation because it controls both volume and pressure in the respiratory breaths according to the lung mechanics it provides better patient ventilator synchrony, which means earlier weaning and lesser time is spent on mechanical ventilation. This mode is quite popular nowadays. So you must remember the similar modes on other ventilatory uh, brands. For example, PRVC is known as auto flow in Dragger, okay, adaptive support in Hamilton Galileo and volume ventilation plus in Puritan Bennett. Okay, so this these three important uh, names you should know. So name changes with the brand. Now, how to set the PRVC? That's very important. Well, for this, you have to first keep the minimum respiratory rate, uh, then set tidal volume. Uh, upper pressure limit needs to be set, which is key parameter, and that prevents the lung from overstretching and barotrauma. The maximum available pressure limit is 5 centimeter of water below the preset upper pressure alarm limit. Okay, suppose you set the alarm limit, the pressure alarm limit of uh, 50 centimeters. So the 45 will be the limit. Okay, I mean the 45 will be the pressure limit. So the pressure limit will always be 5 centimeter lesser than the upper pressure alarm limit. So that's the difference. Okay. Now we have to understand how to set the rise time and what is that? So rise time is the time to reach the peak inspiratory pressure. So lesser the rise time, higher will be the flow required to reach that much pressure. So keep it shortest in case of COPD or asthma because the, um, the bronchi are already very narrowed. So you require higher flow and you require less time so that the expiratory time will uh, be more for uh, expiration, okay? So keep it shortest, keep the rise time shortest in case of COPD asthma. And for the rest of the respiratory conditions, you can keep the rise time between the point, point 0 0.05 to point, uh, 0.15 seconds, okay? And FiO2, uh, IE ratio, PEEP, you can keep like whatever way you want, I mean, depending upon the patient's situation. Now let's move on to question number two. This is again a question about the type of dyssynchrony. So in PRPC mode, what type of dyssynchrony is seen in the following figure? So this is related to PRBC. So examine over here what is happening. So this is again a question about the type of dyssynchrony, which is quite commonly asked in competitive exams nowadays. Now for this to answer this question, look at the pressure graph closely. What is happening here? So you can see this is a proper pressure uh, waveform and this is kind of square wave, isn't it? So this is square wave. So this is a pressure waveform, proper pressure waveform. But here what is happening, there, there is a overshoot, okay, at the end of inspiration. Flow trace shows the increase in the spread time. Can you see? So the spirited time is a little bit increased. Okay. So that's what is the, um, so that is what is happening over here. So probably in this question, the problem is the delayed cycling. So 
what is happening after inspiration expiration starts so here the inspiration is taking time and this kind of thing is called delayed termination or delayed cycling uh and that is very important so now to understand what are the types of desynchrony and how we solve we have to uh, take up a separate class but uh, let's understand a little bit about the patient ventilator asynchrony which is classified based on various phases in the ventilator breath so let's draw a uh, inspiratory breath so this is a flow time uh, scalar so this is a square wave pattern of flow volume control mode so this is inspiration and that's now expiration so in expiration this is called trigger correct so anything which starts the breath is called trigger and most commonly the asynchrony occurs during the trigger okay so the trigger asynchrony so the trigger asynchrony can be of two four types there may be a missed trigger the patient won't be able to trigger with the effort patient has so that that will be called ineffective trigger or auto trigger the patient won't start even breath don't try to even start the breath but ventilator will start the breath so that is called auto triggering or the double triggering the patient wants to get one breath only it starts for one breath but the ventilator will give two breaths at a time so that is called double triggering then delayed triggering so the ventilator will take some more some time to to start the breath the patient wants it earlier so these two these four types of uh dyssynchrony occurs during the time of trigger so these are the most common asynchrony and somebody ask you what is the common most common uh, uh, asynchrony or what is the time when uh, asynchrony occurs most commonly in the uh, during the time of uh, breath so that's your at the start of breath or at the time of triggering okay so this is number 1 now second type of dyssynchrony occurs when there is a cycling off okay when there is a termination of breath so those Dyssynchrony are termed as the cycle asynchrony. So the cycling means that inspiration is changing to expiration. Okay, so where, here you can see that inspiration is stopping and expiration is starting. Okay, so here some asynchrony can occur, and there are two types of asynchrony which are described during this uh, time of breath: delayed or premature. So delayed means that the patient neural TI is more than ventilator ti so patient continues to breathe the ventilator continues to give inspiration though patient doesn't want okay so that is your delay and then premature means that it is coming earlier okay and then third type is the flow the flow asynchrony the flow may not be adequate so it it could be like this so that is called flow starvation so it could be like this flow starvation of flow ineffectiveness flow starvation asynchrony or excessive flow sometimes that is also a type of asynchrony so either flow is not matching to the demand of the patient that is flow starvation or if or the ventilator is giving relatively excessive flow which patient does not want so that is type of flow asynchrony so only three types of asynchrony are described trigger acyclic and flow asynchrony so ventilator ka jo ti hai that is more than the patient ka neural ti okay so that is the important uh, uh, thing so ventilator continues to provide the breath beyond the patient's need of his free time so that is the type of asynchrony okay the patient the ventilator delivers the breath which is longer than the expected or desired by the patient so that is the definition of delayed cycling or delayed termination of breath an obstructive respiratory mechanics profile appears to be more associated with delayed cycling asynchrony the management is basically you have to increase the inspiratory flow in volume control ventilation so either to so how to treat the so treatment the so treatment is simple you increase the flow in volume control ventilation okay or you decrease the inspiratory time the ventilator inspiratory time in pressure control ventilation or you have to adjust the expiratory time sensitivity trigger sensitivity or cycling level 
okay so ets has to be manipulated has to be set so you have to actually increase the cycling level or ets in pressure support ventilation so this is the management of delayed cycling so we will the so most commonly delayed cycling occurs in obstructive pathology and that too when the patient is on pressure support ventilation when you want to wean the patient off so you always remember that you have so normally we set ets at uh, 25% so we set the ets at 25% but in case of obstructive pathology we have to set the ets at 50% or 40% okay like that so you have to probably uh, you have to actually increase the ets or cycling threshold or cycling uh, level okay so that is important to understand here so when you increase the cycling threshold and or percentage on ets and what happens ventilator cycles off early so in that way the is pretty time ti decreases okay so ti actually decreases so what happens ti automatically will go up remember that one asynchrony can result in another one so if somebody ask you delayed cycling is related to which type of another common asynchrony so the answer would be ineffective trigger why so in delayed cycling what happens is that ti increases so what happens eventually te will become low so what happens the flow expiratory flow expiratory flow will not be completed so there will be flow limitation so what will happen all the air will be trapped inside the lung and that will lead to what hyperinflation and hyperinflation will cause what generation of auto peep as i have already covered in my previous video that intrinsic peep or auto peep is the problem in ineffective triggering so what happens is that patient has to generate extra pressure about auto peep to trigger the next breath leading to undetectable effort or missed effort by the ventilator so that is why auto peep causes the ineffective triggering triggering so these points are very very crucial uh, concepts and you must understand you must go back and read in the books so i would suggest you to read from tobin okay so you read from tobin this is a very good book on mechanical ventilation if you if you are really interested so now let's move on to the rather a simple mcq quickly this is a homework for you it may be asked which mode has the highest variation of death uh, vcac pcac or pressure support or pressure assembly answer with a justification uh, in this comment box so thanks a lot uh, links to useful references suggested to read are given in the description below uh, in my video thank you so much bye bye